to remove myself from this place, this veil of tears, to go to a different place, a spiritual place, where God may be, where God is. To this the Rebbe addresses that we are never outside of God, that God is here in this world just as God was before the world was created. But we say in the prayers every day, you are the one before the world is created, you are the one after the world is created. What do you mean, you are the one? Of course, there's only one creator. So the Rebbe explains, this is not just a stating of fact that God is the original creator and continues to be the only watchman over us. That's simple, it's a simple concept. But rather it's saying, you God are just the same, just as you were one indivisibly before the world was created, so too now. You're one and indivisible after the world was created. But there's a world, there's trillions upon trillions, gazillions of creatures and molecules and atoms and, and quarks and rays and, and waves and all kinds of fascinating and wondrous things that exist in the world and the universe. How can you say you're the same there that there's nothing else that you haven't changed. And the answer the Rebbe gives is that even while everything is created, it's just like light that's found within the sun. The light that's found within the sun does not shine outwardly. It's found there in the sun. And it's there in its totality. And there's lots of light there, but you just don't see it because all you see is the sun itself, the body of the sun itself. If you were to go into that area, you wouldn't see light. Light requires a place where it could expand to. There's no expansion there. There's just the hot gases that are tremendously compressed. You don't see anything. But the light is there because it could be emanated for billions of miles. It reaches Pluto and beyond. And so, God is there totally. We are like the creations of God's light, but we're never outside of God's being. This is all within God's being. And so therefore, we are like the light of the sun that's still found within the bowl of the sun where there is nothing outside of the bowl of the sun. It's there, but it doesn't function as a separate entity. And it's not really separate from the sun. So too, we're really not separate. Everything is included. Just like a thought is included in the brain, we are included in God's thought. We're never outside of God's thought. And so God is here, just as God was before we were created, after we were created. Same way, we're never really a change. There's no place outside of God. We haven't changed God. But we're with God. And because we're with God, can you imagine being with the most beautiful, richest, most powerful individual in the world? Whenever you want, you have an audience with that person. You'd love that. You'd love having that control, that power, the ability to be with the most powerful, most wonderful person in the world. We have far greater power. We're together with God himself who's far greater than any individual human being that ever lived or would live. God is the infinity, the ultimate, and yet God is here with us. We're not separate. So the first address is to those who believe that God and the world are separate. They're really not separate. The world is batel b'metziut. Its existence is included within God. And for that, we're with God. And that's the greatest joy that a person could possibly have, to be with God himself. Second level of association is that God is not separate from the world, but the world is insignificant. The most important thing is to get closer and closer to understanding God's greatness and God's wisdom. When you realize that the world is not separate from God and that we are here with God and this we're here with the most powerful, the greatest 
of all things. We're here together with God. That will give us the encouragement and the enthusiasm to focus our lives in fulfilling all the commandments and that this will lead us to greater and greater appreciation and understanding of the creator of the universe. But this all comes from this belief and this awareness that God is with us and that we're happy with us and enthusiastic with us and we'll be able to then overcome and to come to every conceivable level that stands before us that we can reach because we have this enthusiasm, this love and this opportunity to grow and to become closer and closer and more understanding. The only way to understand God and have a relationship with God is through the commandments and through the Torah. So that's what we do, but we're doing it only because we're happy, because we're close to God, and that's the only way we can reach God, is through the Torah and mitzvahs. And so that leads us to a greater awareness and connection, greater and greater, as we expand our studies and our knowledge and our activities, we become more and more associated and feel closer to God. Through, through this process, even though it doesn't change God, but we become closer in our awareness and appreciation, which this is Maimonides' approach. Then, of course, there is the concept of joy, being happy, because we're fulfilling God's desire to make this world a world where God dwells in, making this a dwelling place for God. Now, the Rebbe has said, that the purpose of the person is to recognize that God is everywhere, that there's no, nothing outside of the, the person. But that's not the ultimate purpose. That is a higher purpose, knowing God, yes, knowing God. Not just being aware of God, not just receiving rewards from God, but knowing God. That's also important. But the most important thing is to know God in the physical world and to be happy with the fact that we've made this world a better world, make this world, the darkness of this world, transform it into light. And not only transform it into light, but to take the light that lies buried within this world and to transform that energy that's lying, the godly energy that lies within everything. Everything has got godly energy in it. My body, this book, this house, you and everything you have, has God's energy in it, and by utilizing it, by bringing God into that world, you're transforming. And not only transforming, but you're taking the divine spark of goodness and godliness that lies in the physical, which is incalculable, and transforming and bringing it back to God. And this is the pleasure that God perceives in having this world and getting this great light manifest in the physical world. And this brings us to a greater state of joy because we're not only doing it for ourselves and enjoying the relationship, we're actually happy for God, that God is happy with this world. And this is what it means, Yismach Yisrael Ba'osav. Israel is joyous with Osav, its makers. What do you mean its makers? How do you have more than one maker? The answer is, that in the physical world, which appears to be separate, in each place of the world, we feel our maker. So that in every place of the world which feels separate, we are making this place and that place feel its maker. So it's as if we have many makers because there are many places where God is present and there are places where God is not present because we haven't done mitzvahs there. Ultimately, everything will be transformed and everything will feel one with God. And then the God will, is one. It says God will be one and his name will be one because there won't be any separation. The physical world, the body, will not be a separation to godliness. And this actually is the third and final, the culmination of Jewish thought that not only are we to focus on the soul, we have to focus on God's desire in transforming the body and the physical world. And we're supposed to be happy because we're supposed to be happy with not just because God is with us, but because we have actualized what God desires and we're happy for God's happiness because God is happy here. And that's why we're happy. And these are three distinct levels of happiness.